So as part of the 30 Days of Taker video series, you're probably expecting everything to be glowing and praiseworthy and all that skipty skip and whoop de woo And the reality is, it can't all be that. It can't be all sunshine and rainbows and puppies and perfection and wonderful things. Like, the dude's been in WWE 30 years. There's been some crap. There's been some bad. There's been some really, really dumb things. I know for those of you that have watched me on this channel and the old Off the Rope Show channel over the years, you've always heard me express just how much I really disliked Human Taker, both American Badass Taker and the other version that I'll get to in a different video. But, you know, maybe you've always wondered, like, what's the real driving, motivating factor around why this dude who's such a raging Taker fan hates American badass takers so much. Well, wonder no longer. I'm going to do my best to explain the different reasons today why I just hated American badass taker. Now, when you go back to his return at Judgment Day 2000, like, it's a cool moment. Taker comes back, you know, the, the, um, Titan Tron was cool. You know, him coming back on the motorcycle, you know, wiping out the McMahon click. Like, there was certainly a cool factor to that. But believe me, the honeymoon period ran out on it very quickly as reality started to set in for me. And I think what it was in a lot of ways, honestly, is it's kind of a generational thing when you think about why so many folks that are maybe like in the 25 to 32, 33 age range swear by American Badass and Big Evil Taker, where guys like me at 39 don't, is because I grew up on the original character. Like, that's what I was familiar with. That's what I had the appreciation for. That was the one that stood out. That's the character to me that was so different from basically anything we had in professional wrestling at the time. That was the guy that was the foundation, the bedrock, the pillar for me as a WWF fan for so many years when some of the other things related to the product were not that good. And some of the top guys at the time I was not fans of at all. It was the original Undertaker, even with some of the variations in him over the years. He's the one that kept me coming back. He's the one that kept me emotionally involved and interested, at least to some degree. Not the real man, Mark Calloway. I know it sounds callous and cold, but I didn't want to turn on wrestling and see Mark Calloway. I wanted to turn on WWF. I wanted to turn on Raw. I wanted to turn on SmackDown. And I wanted to see the God dang Undertaker. I didn't want to see his stupid motorcycles. Again, while it's a cool entrance and it looks cool, sounds great, especially looks and sounds fantastic when you're making that entrance at a WrestleMania, that's not the taker that I wanted to see. I wanted to see the taker that came in on a hearse or appeared to be floating through the mist. I don't want to see the freaking Harris brothers with longer hair. The hell with that. And I certainly didn't want to hear him cut full-length, real man type of promos. Like, for me, I've always been a big-time character, Mark, when it comes to professional wrestling. I believe wrestling is at its absolute best when you've got all these different shapes, all these different styles, all these different sizes, you name it. Too much of any one thing is just too much. Whether that's 300-pound chiseled roided guys or 190-pound flippy midgets. Doesn't matter. Too much of any one thing is just bad. And what I've always appreciated about those early years of Taker, you know, especially when he was with Paul Bear, is the guy didn't say much. Now, as you went more into the Attitude Era, certainly Taker started to speak more, but there was still a difference to him, that kind of cult leader type of mindset. But now when you get to human Taker, American badass Taker, now he's sitting there and he's holding the mic like this and he's just kind of rambling on about crap and I just didn't want to hear it. Like now you're just becoming another guy and I never wanted to look at Taker as just being another guy. And for far too often during that stretch, when he would kind of grab the mic and talk, I felt like I was kind of being lectured to. Like, I had no interest in hearing that at all. It just made him really blend into the crowd. 
but you're still calling him the Undertaker. Maybe that's part of it too. Was you're calling him the American badass, the Undertaker, but you're still calling him the Undertaker. You know, at least go fully in the direction of the human element and call him Mark Calloway. If you're going to do that, then go all the way. That dip in your toes in one pool, but you're still trying to latch on to him being the Undertaker, even though he's not the Undertaker anymore, just absolutely made me want to vomit. But even in spite of all of that, like, I can also certainly acknowledge that this was a period of time in Taker's career after, you know, close to a decade of doing that original Dead Man character. I understand the appeal of wanting to do something different if I'm Mark Kelly. I can understand why he wanted to take a break, why he wanted to freshen up the gimmick, protect the original gimmick. He wanted to get himself out there a little bit more, be able to do more interviews, potentially cash in a little bit more at least. I totally get it and totally understand it. I really do. But reportedly Vince always hated Human Taker, and this is one of these areas where I'm 100% in alignment and agreement with Vince. Like, you could do so many cool things from a special effects standpoint, from an optic standpoint, from a gimmick standpoint, a storyline, feud, rivalry standpoint with The Undertaker that you no longer could do with the American badass. It sucked. Like, Vince always talked about, you know, the WWF back in the day, even when you go to the Beyond the Mat documentary, talking about, well, we're in the business of making movies, pal. Well, you used to be able to make things that felt like movies with the original Undertaker. American Badass just felt like a really whack-ass info infomercial that would air at 3 in the morning. But I think even beyond all of that, I think what it is, is I associate Human Taker with the death of WCW and that stupid invasion angle and the immediate aftermath for the business. Like, I look at that 2001 run, and I absolutely hate it. Absolutely hate it. Which is ironic because you had that great mania match between him and Hunter at 17. I, it's hard to hate on that. And I don't really hate that. You know, like there were some spots in here, 2000, 2001, where Taker was in some memorable marquee type of matches. You think about that, uh, that six-way Hell in a Cell match where he told Rikishi's ass he was going to make him famous and he did choke slamming him into the hay truck or whatever the hell it was. Like, you know, this dude was in some spots here, but... I associate Human Taker with, to me, the worst wrestling angle of all time because of what could have happened, what it represented, and ultimately, the doo-doo that we got, the invasion angle. Like him and Kane reuniting for a short period of time, you know, to sit there and go after Austin and Triple H as they were doing kind of their two-man power trip angle. I didn't want to see Austin and Triple H tagging together because I didn't want to see Austin as a heel. And I didn't want to see Taker in this type of role where he's basically jobbing out to those two guys. Like, I didn't want to see that. And then it's 2001 Advance, and you got into the whole place of the DDP angle. Good God, this was terrible. Like, this had the potential, maybe, to do something really cool, to do something really different, and to put a DDP really on the map for the WWEF audience, and none of that crap happened. Like, in part, like, I always really liked DDP in his WCW time. So I think there was a little bit of lingering resentment for me that Undertaker during this time in 2001 was focused on sending a message to DDP and trying to teach him how things are done up here and basically buried his ass. That's what he did. Like, if I'm going to sit there and talk about how certain people over the years in the business have buried other folks and held people back, you know, the Breakfast Club type of stuff, the Austin type of stuff, uh, the Brett and Sean stuff, the Hogan stuff. Like, some of those guys that have refused to do jobs and, you know, win over when they absolutely had no business doing it. Then in this case, I absolutely have to rail on Mark Calloway for this. Like, this was crap. You're bringing a DDP in who brings some element of audience with him. Why would you sit there and want to send them some type of message to the point where you absolutely kill the gimmick and character before it ever has a chance? Why would you sit there and do that and negatively hurt the company and its bottom line and its ability to make money? That's stupid. And that's exactly what happened. And don't even mention the involvement of Sarah and all this crap. Oh, good God almighty, like DDP, we all knew who DDP was at the time. 
And you're pre positioning this in a way where he's like sexually obsessed with Sarah. Why would he have been sexually obsessed with Sarah when he had Kimberly Page? Like we had brains. We're dumb as wrestling fans, but we're not that stupid. We know better. You insulted our goddamn intelligence. Which, while sometimes we clearly demonstrate a lack of, there are other times, like, you go too far and you just insult our intelligence and this was it. And you have it culminate with a SummerSlam tag match in a cage, wasn't it? DDP and Canyon versus Kane and Taker. Like, it was just trash. And even then, I associate American Badass Taker with that Survivor Series 2001 match. You just couldn't give WCW that one, could you, Vince? You just couldn't let WCW get one over. You just couldn't let them stand tall for one freaking moment in time. Like, that speaks to peak insecurity in the man. Like, you owned them, literally. You owned everything about them. Let it go. Let it go. So I associate American Badass Taker with that garbage. So if you ever wondered, like, really, truly, why the hell I hated the American badass version of The Undertaker, here you go! And the biggest, the biggest reason of all that I did was because American badass taker was the pathway and gateway to something even worse. And that was Big Evil Undertaker, which is just stupid and horrible in every freaking way. And coming up, I believe, on Friday, November the 20th, you're going to hear all of my ranting about why I hated Big Evil Undertaker so damn much.